Hey there you guys, it is Irene Lyon here and I'm recording from my Airbnb, it's beautiful, in um, Seattle, Washington. I'm down here for four days learning from one of my mentors who I've learned from for years, um, since I think 2010. Her name is Kathy Kane. She practices something called somatic practice. It's a blend of her work in body work, somatic experiencing, and just her experimentation over the years. Now, I'm always learning more. Even though I've got a successful practice, I already help tons of people around the world, we always have to keep learning. And someone the other day asked me the question, when do we stop healing? When have, we, when, um, what happens, or can we, I should say, can we get through and, and heal all our traumas? And I think that at our current time point in the universe, in the world, in the human species, we are always going to be doing some form of healing. Many of us have had adverse experiences. I talk about this in other vlogs. Be sure to check them out. I'll link some below. Many of us have just stress in our life because of our lifestyle, our work, kids, um, grad school, all sorts of things. And it all affects our body. So Kathy the other day um, was saying something, and I've known this and I haven't vlogged about it. So I'm gonna be doing more vlogs. I'm taking in, just a sec, my notes. I have dozens of these books filled with notes and of course it informs all my work, all my programs, all my articles, all my vlogs, but here's what I wanted to read from you. Um, it has to do with working at the level of the stress physiology. And she said, you know, by the time we reach 50, 60 years old, if we haven't learned how to work with our stress physiology, in other words, learn how to bring our system down, that, that adrenaline response, that cortisol response, something that is pumped out when we feel that we're under threat, when we perceive that we are under threat, or when we are, when we are actually under threat. So we need to create what she calls a bottom-up approach, a physiological approach. Again, something I've talked about forever. Um, we need to learn what I call biological embodiment, and we need to interrupt the signaling process. So that process that's, that perceives, I'm gonna die, um, there's a bear, or there's a perceived bear in the brain, the story that your body tells you that there's something wrong, that something is not right, because it secretes chemicals. It secretes adrenaline, which we need in small doses, and it secretes cortisol, which we also need in the morning to wake us up. But what occurs is that past history, our own physiology gets primed, it gets wired. Be sure to watch my video on neuroplasticity and how we wire and how we unwire, but it gets wired, our signaling messages in our physiology, not in our brain. It's not just in our brain. It secretes these chemicals when we don't need them or it doesn't secrete them when we need them. So that's what I wanna just touch on today. This is gonna be a short video. Um, if you don't understand how to listen to your stress physiology, if you're all behavior based, if you're all about just mantras and mindset and changing behavior, but not listening to the inside, that has to shift. And the reason it has to shift is because it drives the front of our bus when we are just doing life. And we don't even notice it sometimes. We get to the end of our day and we're burnt out, we're tired, and we've never stopped to listen to our stress physiology. Now the other thing is that she said yesterday is that our brain is kind of like, we think of the brain as like the thing that governs everything. And while it is very important, obviously, speech, vision, hearing, senses, creativity, all that stuff, it's still an end organ. And our physiology releases chemicals that go to the brain that can over time cause toxicity in the brain. One area of the brain that gets affected with long-term stress is the hippocampus. It's responsible for our memory. So when we have too much stress, that starts to shrink. We see this in people that have PTSD. The other thing is if we are constantly living in our stress physiology, always bamming out that adrenaline, always putting out that cortisol, it deteriorates the cells, the tissues. Bones become brittle. We develop things like osteoporosis. We don't heal. Our gut lining, our belly, 
doesn't function properly, our immune system goes down. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Now, how do you learn to work with the stress physiology? One of the things, the one of the first things is education. So I'm glad you're here watching this. The second thing is getting some really solid, what I call biological embodiment exercises on board, specifically working with the body sensations and learning how to listen to that response. Other things that I teach deeper into my courses, learning how to work at the level of the kidneys and the adrenals. Those are those two little organs mid-back, kidneys that filter our urine and help basically balance our acid base in our body. But on top of, I'll put a little picture up here in a second, um, the kidneys have this little tiny hat that sits on top and that little hat is our adrenal gland. Everyone's talking about adrenal fatigue and adrenal burnout, but not many people even know what that is. So on top of our kidney is this little adrenal gland and it pumps out adrenaline and cortisol. Obviously, when we need to, when we need it, we want it to come in, like when we have a stress response, but that should only last like a few seconds, right? It cycles, the adrenaline response comes down it can come down every eight minutes. So in other words, if we have a big stressor and if we take the time to wait for our chemistry to come down, it will. But most of us go, go, go. We don't stop, we go, right? 24 seven, always on the go, always doing something, always another to-do list, always another activity to do, always another social media feed to check. Da 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 da. You get it? So. What I'm going to link below this video somewhere is a link to one of my guides called How to De-Stress in Seven Steps. It's one of my older eBooks. It's on my site, but I'll put it down below. It explains more about our stress response. It doesn't dive into the kidney adrenals. This is a deeper thing that I'll get to in more in future videos, but we need to learn how to pause in our day. And it doesn't mean like a 20 minute yoga class or a meditation class, or I guess it's an hour young yoga class, because even when we go into some of these classes that we use for relaxation, if we aren't cued into our stress physiology, it can stay ramped up even though we're pretending to be zen and relaxed. This is a big problem right now in the mindfulness culture. A lot of people are going to these things, but they have no map they have no map, no internal map, no interoceptive map. Interoception is our capacity to perceive our internal environment. They don't have it online. Many people don't have it online. This is why we hear of people doing all the right things and then they hit 50 or 60 and they end up with some kind of chronic illness or they're in their 30s and they have a chronic illness. Um, so bottom line, we need to work at the level of our stress physiology, our stress chemistry. We need to understand that the brain is really in many ways an end organ and this body of ours and how it reacts to our environment, right? How it reacts, how it acts is another key process we have to learn how to work with, learn its language, and we need to do practices throughout our day to learn how to bring like this. Imagine the stress level going down. Imagine the stress chemicals sucking back up into the bloodstream so they can be excreted, right? Our body wants to come out of these responses, but we have to give it a chance. We have to learn about them and then we have to practice. That's it for today. I hope this has been useful. If you are not watching this on my YouTube channel or on my site, head over there. Please subscribe to my YouTube video. I'm going to be doing way more videos as the year goes on, as time goes on like these. Um, and if you haven't signed up for my email updates, do so as well. And I'll link that guide just below. Take very good care and we will see you next time.